Hello everyone. Okay, so today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my historic zombie deck. Um, I think most people probably expected zombie tribal to be viable, and it is actually in a multitude of different ways. Uh, this is literally just one possible take on the build, and it's kind of a weird one, but it does alright overall. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, first, we have probably one of the more obvious staples, which is Champion of the Perished. Uh, whenever a zombie EBFs, um, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it basically is just an early game beat stick. But it's great for uh, being a magnet for target removal because people get scared of it pretty quickly. Uh, next is Shambling Ghast, which is does a lot more work than you think. Um, when it dies, it can either give a target creature minus one, minus one until end of turn, which you can use sometimes to just kill a creature, um, or it creates a treasure token, which helps you ramp really fast. So another really good one drop. Uh, moving into the two drop slot, we got two copies of Feed the Swarm. I would love to get this up to three, but I don't know what to cut for it. <clears throat> but it allows you to destroy a creature on enchantment, but you lose life equal to that permanent's mana value. Um, we have three copies of Tainted Adversary, a card I'm kind of iffy on. Um, you can play it in the early game uh, as a 2-3 with Death Touch. You can play it in a late game and get some zombies and make it a slightly bigger creature with Death Touch. Um, but there's zombies with Decayed, which I really don't like the Decayed mechanic super much. Uh, or very much because I don't know getting one use out of zombies seems like it sucks it would be great if you could find a way to make this a viable card for anything that involves like sacrificing or just having your creatures die but I mean outside of that it doesn't it's not as helpful as you might think next we have four copies of undead auger because whenever it or another zombie you control dies you draw a card and lose a life now, on that, I want to comment how one serious problem with this particular build is I don't have any life gain, but I do have a lot of ways to utilize life as a resource. So you have to get pretty solid, a pretty solid start in order to get moved this build, because uh, if you lose too much life, then you effectively can't do certain things with this build. Um, next, we have Blade Stitch Scab, which is just a really basic zombie lord. It's a 2-3 on its own, but it gives other zombies plus 1, plus 0. Oh. Um, this is a brand new card to this build, and I just replaced another card with it. Um, Garof Visionary, Visionary Stitcher. I only just barely got a few copies of this. But it gives all your zombies flying, and then you can sacrifice another non-token creature and create an XX blue zombie creature token where X is the sacrifice creature's toughness. So if somebody is about to board wipe or just target removal a specific one, or let's say you have Undead Augur out and you just want to get some draw, you can create a new zombie, um to cover the loss of the other one just by sacrificing it and tapping this. Now naturally, uh, since Gareth is not himself a zombie, he pretty much only becomes a utilization card, but I still think he has the potential to do super well, even if I haven't seen him in action yet. Next we have four copies of Lord of the Accursed because it gives all zombies plus one plus one. Um, and you can also tap him to give all your zombies menace, which is a good way to help finish up the game. Um, four copies of Murderous Rider, because this is pretty obvious, it's got a kill spell on it that destroys creatures and planeswalkers, and then he can come down as his own as a 2-3 zombie. Finally, I have a card that I'm not entirely certain about using, but she allows you to recast zombies from the graveyard, um, but it's the way on Untouched by Death. You can mill three cards, if at least one zombie was milled this way, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Um, target creature gets minus minus uh, minus x minus x, where x is the number of zombies you control, or you can cast zombie spells from your graveyard at no additional mana cost to you. So she's got a lot of alts. She's got a lot of awesome utilization. She's removal. She gives you the ability to um, gain a little bit of life if necessary, and you can cast stuff from your graveyard. So she's all right for four mana. <clears throat> Next, the Scarab God, which I really love in this build because you can just take your opponent's creatures. Um, except they become 4-4 black zombies. But failing that, you can turn your own creatures, like your 1-1s, one into 4-4 four four zombies. So that's useful. And finally, I have a single copy of Gem Palm Polluter. Um, ignoring literally everything else about it, you can cycle it for 2 mana, and the target player loses life equal to the number of zombies on the battlefield. So it's a nice little one-off to finish it off, finish off the game. 
blue is very second rate in this deck, so I only have three islands as opposed to ten mono black sources with eight swamps and two castle lockwain, four copies of giant catacomb, four for watery grave, and two copies of fable passage because we do have a lot of turn one plays in this particular build. All right, let's go. All right. Let's see how we do. Now, I haven't played this particular deck in a while, and I haven't got to use gear off, like I said earlier. So it'll be a bit of a toss-up as to how this goes. But it looks like we actually have a pretty good curve with this first hand, so let's go ahead and see how this uh, plays out. I think it's going to be turn one, Shambling Ghast, possibly turn two, Advisory, although our adversary, although I'm leaning more towards Augur. All right, Gast is down. And Palmet's got nothing off the bat. Lockwing in, and we will play Augur. And it looks like on the next turn we'll be able to give our zombies flying, so that's cool. Or better yet, let's just give them pumps. That just kind of seems like a better option here. I mean, it's not like we can't play Garoff next turn. The cultivation efforts are in vain. I wonder what they're playing where they're more focused on Snowlands than anything else. Something about the concept of flying zombies just kind of comes off as terrifying to me. Exile target permanent. What are you going to target? It's going to be three or greater. So it's going to be Lord or Garolf. Garolf. I don't know if that was a smart choice there. Um, let's see, what's next? Nine creature spells. What's next is my opponent quits. Okay. I had him down on board as it was. So, yeah, stalling was stupid. Alright, let's go ahead and claim that prize. Got my volume adjusted. Let's go for the next game. Mark Soul. The C and a K. Um, I don't love this hand, but the fact that the two blade stitchers can work off of each other is fine. So we'll go ahead and go with it. Oh no, not a Phoenix deck. Blech. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, get your one little point of damage in. Ooh, champion. Alright, let's put down champion. Total waste of blue mana, but whatever, it works. Well. Um. Better if the removal goes to that than anything else in my hand. Alright, blades to scab. Watch, it's gonna burn it somehow. Nope. <clears throat> Just gonna play a lot. And surveil. Really not happy that I haven't drawn at least one more land. Yep, there it is. Boom. Oh, it only did two damage. You're gonna have to do, a, do another spell. The delirium did not go off yet. This guy really likes his special arts, doesn't he? Oh, is it another one? It's another one? Uh it's another one. It's gonna exile it too. You know, I just wanna say I'm flattered that, that one blade stitch scab was such a threat. 
that you had to use multiple removal spells. Um, speaking of removal spells, how about my own personal screw you? Yeah, eat that, jerk. I'm super far behind on mana, though, so this sucks. Oh, it's a phoenix. See, I knew this was a phoenix deck. I don't, I don't see us winning this one. Yeah, we're just barely getting a water grave, and I'm probably just going to have to have it enter tapped. <clears throat> I would have to gain an overwhelming advantage really fast with little to no interaction from my opponent. Oh, yeah, that right there just seals the deal. That's... Oof. One of these days, I should make a Phoenix deck. Well, we'll put down a Lord of the Accursed. Um, yeah. Yeah, good game indeed. <clears throat> I got mana screwed on that one. It's not my fault. If I had gotten cards, I would have been able to just hand over if I just played more and more and more zombies, but two lands for most of the game, you can't really do much with that. <laughs> What's this? Cemetery Desecrator. When it enters the battlefield or dies, exile another card from your graveyard. When you do, either remove X counters from target permanents, where X is the mana value of the exiled card. Target opponents... doesn't seem that good. It's like six mana for all of that. Alright, let's try another game. Okay. So, turn one swamp, turn two ground catacombs. We have a few options. We have we have ways to make this work. At the very least, we don't start off with just two lands. We have removal in hand. We have tainted adversary as a turn to play. Um, we have access to blue and black. So, this should be fine. The only downside is being no champion and no um, shambling guest. All right, another giant. Whoops, giant catacombs, tainted adversary, just as is. I mean, there's literally nothing wrong with a two-three with death touch. The next turn, probably play undead auger. Let's see what our opponent does. It's not doing anything yet. Okay, another snow forest. It's elves! Of course it is. Alright, well I don't want more lands, so we'll go ahead and put that down. Put down Undead Augur. Go ahead and go get us a, another swamp. An attack. It's a free two damage, unless for some reason they feel like actually losing their Elvish War Master. Which I know they don't because that thing spawns elves. It's always elves these days. I mean, it's better than constantly going against nothing but life gain decks, but seriously, it's always elves these days. Bah. Bah, 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 bah. What are they gonna do? See, Elves is unfortunately a deck that overwhelms really fast unless you shut it down. Oh, dude, I had Feed the Swarm on the hand. I should have just killed it. I'm dumb. Well, they might actually play something that's worse than an Elvish War Master. I think this one just spawns Warrior Tokens. Yeah, Elf Warriors. Yep. And it only happens once each turn. So, there are better options, there are worse options. Chancellor. Yep, there we go. That's worth killing. That's way more problematic. <clears throat> no blocks. Uh, put down another swamp. Put down an undead auger. Put down feed the swarm. Kill the chancellor. Worth it.
Let's see what the opponent does. I guess next turn my only option is to play Liliana. Which I could probably use her to help filter out some of the other more problematic elves if they come down. With her minus two ability. But... <coughs> Most likely, I'm just going to use her to, I guess, play the role of a distraction. <clears throat> That's weird to be playing a Cultivate at this time. <clears throat> Alright. What do you got for us now? Not even an attack. Okay. Go ahead and play Liliana Untouched by Death. And we don't have any zombies in the grave, so... Um... Let's go ahead and continue setting them back. And we will attack with all except for one undead auger. Because if I can get more than one use out of Liliana, it'll be worth the four mana. This might be the most aggressively I've played against an elf deck ever. Why are you thinking so hard? There we go. It's either block or don't block. In your situation, I'd probably say don't block. Okay, now he's gonna drop an army. Look at this. Yeah, there's one. At, wait, what? Just the 5-4? This doesn't seem like the time to be playing that conservatively. Alright, I'll play the Shambling Ghast. Um, and we'll go ahead and do the mill 3 cards. Oh, we got one zombie in there, so that helps. Um, obviously, we don't attack. If he attacks with his big elf boy, we kill it with the Tainted Adversary and draw two cards. Totally worth it. Riskar! Okay, this guy's being pretty unconventional. Some of the weirder cards I've seen in an elf deck. Okay, that's that's a pretty good play right there. I can respect that. He does not swing, though. Alright, well, let's go ahead and play Lord of the Accursed. There's nothing in the graveyard that I can reanimate, or that's worth a reanimation, so we'll just go ahead and mill three. One, two, and three. And... No attacks. I think I want to wait for a better opportunity. Good game, he says. Alright, let's see what happens. Can Rishkar pump everything? No. What? Hold on. What? Whoa! Okay! Um... Wow! <laughs> I'm just gonna accept this fate. That was awesome. That was single-handedly one of the coolest plays I've ever seen in my life. What was that exponential growth? This guy just hit me with 48 points of damage off of one creature. Alright, well, um... That's two losses and a win, which is pretty disappointing for this channel. Let's see what time we got. We only got 20 months, so let's go ahead and do one more round. And see if we can't balance it out, or if I'm just going to have to admit that my zombie build sucks. <laughs> I mean, I could have won off of that game if not for that sudden boom shakalaka, but wow. That was cool. I, was, I, I can't even be mad about that.
Okay, yeah, definitely had them all that. This is keepable, except uh, we will get rid of the gem palm polluter. It's a it's a nice card. It's a nice thought, as I like to put it. Um, but <clears throat> you know, we got better options. So I think this one's pretty clear cut. Swamp into champion. On the following turn, play Shambling Gas, crack the Fable Passage, and probably go get an island so we can play the Blade Stitch Scab. <clears throat> yep, this is pretty much exactly how I expected this to go. And attack. Nah, spell slingers. Always a fun one. Another champion of the perished. That's probably the better play. Another sprite dragon, and now they're gonna play a shock. No shock, no opt, nothing. No? Okay. Don't see that every day. Alright, Blade Stitch Scab. Let's just go ahead and keep beating each other up. <laughs> see, sometimes it's fine to just have exponentially grown beat sticks. <clears throat> Alright, Shock, Opt, Faithless Looting, any of these. Sprite Dragon, apparently. Do no follow-up? Okay, I guess I win. Infuriate, okay. That's something. Yeah, take out the big one. Take that out too. There you go. Good stall method. I'm still winning, but whatever. Prismari Command! Okay. It's a solid desperation move. That was a lofty denial they just discarded. Alright, that's the GG. Well, that was um, an unexpected game. But hey, one with two mana. That was pretty sweet on its own. Alright, well that wraps it up for this particular video. We might explore another zombie themed deck later on. Especially since I have plenty of zombie-based stuff now. Um, in the meantime, thanks for watching and have a great rest of the day.